Breaking news from around your world on this Friday, March 8th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was sentenced Thursday to nearly four years in prison for tax and bank fraud related to his work advising Ukrainian politicians, much less than the sentence that was called for under guidelines. While that was the longest sentence to date come from special counsel Robert Mueller's probe, it could have been much worse for Manafort. Sentencing guidelines called for a 20-year term, effectively a lifetime sentence for the 69-year-old. Manafort has been jailed since June, so he will receive credit for the nine months he's already served. He still faces the possibility of additional time from his sentencing in a separate case in the District of Columbia, where he pled guilty to charges related to illegal lobbying. Manafort was among the first Trump associates charged in the Mueller investigation and has been a high-profile defendant. A jury last year convicted Manafort on eight counts, concluding that he hid from the IRS millions of dollars he earned from his work in Ukraine. South Korean President Moon Jae-in has replaced his unification minister, who played a major role in last year's detente with the North and named a longtime confidant to lead Moon's drive for a new Korean peninsula. According to a Blue House spokesperson, Kim Yon chul a pro-engagement scholar who heads the state-run Korea Institute for National Unification, will replace Cho Myung-gyon pending a confirmation hearing. The change was part of Moon's largest cabinet reshuffle since taking office in 2017 with new ministers for the interior, land and transportation, culture and sport, ocean and fisheries, science and technology, and small and medium enterprises. The shakeup allows incumbent aides to run in parliamentary elections next year, according to analysts, and turns a page for an administration facing a sluggish economy and sagging popularity. The removal of Cho, who has yet to say if he will enter politics, comes a week after the second summit between President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un failed to narrow their differences on dismantling the North's nuclear program and U.S. willingness to ease sanctions. The United States accused Iran on Thursday of defying a U.N. Security Council resolution with one ballistic missile test and two satellite launches since December and urged the council to bring back tougher international restrictions on Tehran. A 2015 U.N. resolution called upon Iran to refrain for up to eight years from work on ballistic missiles designed to deliver nuclear weapons following an agreement with six world powers. Some states argue that the language does not make it obligatory. In a letter to the 15-member council, acting U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Jonathan Cohen, said Iran tested a medium-range ballistic missile December 1, 2018, and attempted to place satellites in orbit on January 15th and February 5th of this year. Asked for a response to the letter, Spokesman Al-Reza Mirosefi for the Iranian mission to the United Nations said Iran does not have any ballistic missiles designed to carry nuclear weapons. Therefore, none of the ballistic missile launches of Iran are covered by that resolution. The U.S. has not yet proposed any concrete action by the Council to toughen missile restrictions on Iran. Any such move likely would be opposed by veto powers Russia and China. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Thursday denied interfering in Canada's judicial system as he sought to defuse a crisis threatening his political future and offered no apology, asserting only that lessons had been learned. Trudeau called a news conference to address allegations that improper pressure was put on former Justice Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould to help construction firm SNC-Lavalin Group Incorporated avoid a criminal trial. Trudeau, the Liberal Party leader, told reporters, There was no breakdown of our systems, of our rule of law, of the integrity of our institutions. There was never any inappropriate pressure. The 47-year-old Trudeau came to power in November 2015, promising sunny ways, more accountability, and a greater number of women in the cabinet. Yet two high-powered female ministers have quit over the case, and he now finds himself accused of trying to arrange a backroom deal with a major company. 
Trudeau and other officials deny doing anything improper by asking Wilson Raybould to consider offering SNC Lavalin a deal to avoid a trial on charges of bribing Libyan officials. Wilson Raybould had the power to scrap the decision to go to trial and impose a fine, but decided against it. A federal judge dismissed adult film star Stormy Daniels' lawsuit against President Trump. Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, filed the suit a year ago, seeking to end a $130,000 hush money agreement she signed ahead of the 2016 presidential election that kept her from publicly disclosing a sexual encounter she says she had with Trump in 2006. Wanting to get the suit dismissed, Trump and his former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, both agreed not to penalize Daniels for breaching the non-disclosure agreement. Because of that, U.S. District Judge James Otero in Los Angeles said the case should be sent back to California Superior Court. The decision effectively ended the suit, but cleared Daniels to tell her story. A multi-state power outage hit Venezuela Thursday, and President Nicolas Maduro's administration is blaming it on anti-government saboteurs. El Nacional reported at least 18 of 23 states were reportedly affected by the power outage, with the metro in the capital of Caracas brought to a halt and the international airport submerged in darkness starting around 5 p.m. This is part of a power war against the state, the government-owned power corporation Corpolex said in a tweet stating its Guri hydroelectric station was sabotaged without providing evidence. Blackouts are not uncommon in Venezuela, which has been battling a worsening economic situation over the past few years. However, the Washington Post reports the magnitude of the blackout is unusual. Venezuela has been a tinderbox since early January when Venezuela's National Assembly declared Maduro's presidency illegitimate. National Assembly leader Juan Guaido, who's been appointed interim president until new elections can be held, has the backing of some 50 countries, including the United States. Maduro has fought to hold on to the reins of his country, blaming the attempt at his ousting as a U.S. coup. America's new commercial astronaut capsule completed its demonstration flight on Friday. The SpaceX Dragon vehicle left the International Space Station, where it was docked this past week, and dropped through the atmosphere with a splashdown in the Atlantic, about 450 kilometers from Cape Canaveral, Florida. It was the first Atlantic Ocean splashdown of an American spacecraft since Apollo 9 returned to Earth 50 years ago this month. The Dragon mission, which has no humans aboard, only a dummy covered in sensors, went according to script, and it sets the stage for NASA to approve the vehicle for crewed flights. The first of these could occur as soon as July, although no one should be surprised if this target date slips into the summer as engineers work through the post-flight analysis. Not since the shuttles has America been able to send its own astronauts into orbit. It has instead relied on Russia and its Soyuz spacecraft. NASA hopes to bring this near eight-year gap in capability to an end with the introduction of two new commercial transportation systems, one by SpaceX, the other by Boeing. Hall of Fame pitcher Tom Seaver, the star of the Miracle Mets 1969 World Series championship team, has been diagnosed with dementia at the age of 74. His family made the announcement Thursday through the hall and said Seaver has retired from public life. He will continue to work at Seaver Vineyards, founded by the retired player and his wife Nancy in 2002, on 116 acres at Diamond Mountain in the Calistoga region of California. The New York Daily News reported in 2013 that Seaver was diagnosed with Lyme disease in 1991 and it reoccurred in 2012 and led to Bell's palsy and memory loss. Former Mets catcher Mike Piazza, a fellow Hall of Famer, tweeted, He will always be the heart and the soul of the Mets, the standard which all Mets aspire to. This breaks my heart. Seaver has limited his public appearances in recent years. He did not attend the Baseball Writers Association of America dinner in January, where members of the 1969 team were honored on the 50th anniversary of what still ranks among baseball's most unexpected champions. And that's your update for this Friday, March 8th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice.
Thanks so much for supporting this podcast and for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.